The US is looking to update laws and regulations of commercial space activity. Explain this to us and what is the Biden administration actually looking to change? Yeah, it's quite interesting because when we think of space and regulation, uh, it's actually a very confusing area. It's governed often by treaties uh, that then have corresponding bodies who approve flights going into space, coming back to space, all the processes. So, for instance, SpaceX has been working with the FAA, but they've also working for the um, Environmental Protection Agency on all of their work to set up their launch sites. Uh, but one of the realizations of the Biden administration is that uh, given how fast commercial activity is, where the law and legislation is, is not really keeping up uh, to what needs to happen. And in fact, we've kind of seen an example of this in our own back door uh, when the SpaceX crew on trunk uh, space junk crashed in the snowy mountains a few weeks ago. And the Australian Space Agency has been working with their counterparts in the FAA who have to then kind of represent and work on behalf of SpaceX, but not directly. So it becomes a very legislative and regulatory mess, so to speak. And what everyone wants is very clean, clear laws, but also ones that can be updated. And this is the big deal. Uh, a lot of the laws and treaties that were designed for a world in the 60s and 70s that we no longer live in. The technology and things we can do has far outpaced it. And what clearly the U.S. wants to do is to make sure that their private space sector doesn't fall behind. Places like Australia are leaps and bounds in terms of progress for how the private space sector is operating and making good progress, and they do not want the U.S. to lose that advantage as well. So I think we're going to actually see some quite big changes on a very important level to how space business essentially is done in the U.S. Yeah, it certainly sounds very complicated and involves a lot of countries, so uh, but one to watch for sure. Yeah. Now, Brad, China has launched a reusable space plane. How does that work? Yeah, so it's quite of an interesting one because uh, it's quite secretive. They didn't announce exactly what the nature of the project is, but based on estimates of, of what was launched and where it's gone, it appears to be something like a small uh, space shuttle, if you want to imagine. So a lot smaller than how the space shuttle was, but more importantly, it doesn't have humans in it. And it's very similar, we think, to what we call the X-37B. This is a Boeing-built U.S. plane uh, that again, uh, it doesn't take people, but it can go into space. It can stay in orbit in space like a satellite, but it can be controlled remotely like a drone so it can land and be reused like the space shuttle. So it has this weird combination of being an activity like a satellite, a platform for putting things in space, but landing to be reused. And now the US is one we've known can stay up there for literally years in orbit, landing safely and then being relaunched. So China's been quite tight-lipped on exactly what they're doing. We believe that there was a test a few years ago that only spent about three days. How long this one stays in orbit, we're not quite sure, but obviously groups like the U.S. are paying close attention. Yes, no doubt. And also South Korea has launched its first mission to the moon. Take us through that mission, but also where does South Korea sit in terms of this space race? Yeah, you know, South Korea has had a, a space program for a long time. The two things they really haven't done a lot of are their own, uh, uh, their own rockets to take things into space uh, and activity around the moon like lots of people are doing. And so their orbiter went on a SpaceX rocket to the moon. Uh, and so the idea is essentially for this orbiter to go around the moon, do a number of scientific and research experiments, and also do like a lot of things not just do the research and science, but test the technology, because what South Korea wants to do uh, is land a rover and probe on the move by the end of this decade. And so this is where we're seeing space happen. So many new countries are coming onto kind of the moon scene, so to speak. Yes, the U.S. is leading a big group, which Australia is a part of. Uh, and we see, obviously, activity from Russia and China. India has landed on the moon. Israel landed a private probe on the moon a few years ago. Uh, and we're seeing so many new countries participate. New Zealand launched a mission to the moon uh, for NASA a, a month and a half ago. So we're seeing lots of new countries enter the moon race. Uh, and what we're seeing is them obviously outline what they want to do, develop that satellite that goes in orbit around the moon first, once you get that to work, and then land on the moon. And so it's very 
easy to think that in a few years' time, we'll have multiple countries launching multiple missions to the moon, including then landing on the moon. And this is coming off the heels of the announcement that the U.S.'s Artemis mission is going to be launching on the 29th. So the moon is really becoming forefront of activity, again, not just for the Americans, but lots of different countries. And so it's a really exciting and a very different moon race than what we had in the 60s and 70s. Well, every country wants to be part of that space race. That's right. uh, who will be successful? We'll find out. We'll Brad, see. Uh, Brad Tucker, great to speak with you. Thanks for joining us. Take care.